People always think I'm full of it when I tell them that learning how to box helped me to get a degree in physics, learn enough Spanish to watch my favorite telenovelas, mostly without peeking at the subtitles, and get my chest rating into the 1800s. Everyone has this idea that boxing is a sport of brutal headbanging aggression that leaves you with less mental capacity than when you started. And to be fair, I've had some concussions that left me at a loss for how to do something as basic as finding the roots of a polynomial. That happened after a brutal thumping I took from one Cassius Anderson during a sparring session. The following day, I was meeting with a high school student I was tutoring. While working on her Algebra 2 homework, I drew a blank when recalling the relatively simple method of finding the zeros of a quadratic equation. Still, it eventually came back to me and I haven't had any other lapses that I'm aware of since. Shout out to Cassius if you're watching this. You messed me up good, brother. I've been hit by a lot of guys in my boxing career even by some future world champions, but no one hit quite like Cassius. Fun fact here, Cassius broke my orbital bone in sparring. I've actually had the same injury before in the other eye, and it was when former IBF champion Charles Martin hit me in a sparring session. When it happened then, I needed surgery, but Charles didn't hit me hard enough to give me a concussion that made me forget my math. But back to people's reaction when they find out that I'm a boxer with a degree in physics who learned all these other things. The main reason people think I'm full of it is because how many boxers do you know that have gone on to get a degree in physics, especially as adults after they did not graduate from high school? I'll wait. No, seriously, I've asked this question on other social media, and if you know any other boxers who have done it, have them shoot me a message. I'd love to meet my kindred spirits. For proof that I'm not just making this physics degree thing up, I put the department announcement when I graduated on the screen rather than just my degree because Duquesne University, where I went, doesn't put the major on the diploma, so it will be kind of pointless, but you can see the diploma hanging on the wall behind me. For anyone watching this who happens to remember me from high school, I was allowed to walk with the class at graduation, but I never officially graduated from Shimley High School. To make a short story shorter, my grades sucked, and when I was offered a chance to make up for failing senior English, the one class students in my school district are required to pass to be allowed to graduate, I got caught plagiarizing an essay and was failed from summer school. This is a great place to mention the sponsor of today's video, Short Form. If I had something like Short Form in high school, I would have been a much better student. Short Form is a book summary platform where you can get detailed summaries of over 1,000 popular nonfiction books. I've always been skeptical of book summary services like this because I figured that people wouldn't need to buy the book if they got the summary, robbing the author of their rightful compensation. As an author, that idea bugs me. However, I later learned that people don't really use book summaries in place of the actual book. It turns out that reading the summary of a book before, during, and after reading the primary main content causes you to better understand and retain more information. The official name for this is called Schema Theory. I've included the link in the description explaining more about it. And I've taken advantage of Schema Theory by using Short Form's detailed summary to help me recall some ideas for this video in particular from one of my favorite books, The Art of Learning. And I've purchased The Art of Learning like three times, so I've more than got my share of contributing to the author's pockets. To check out Short Form, use my link shortform.com slash adlatimore for a one week free trial. And if you stay on with them after your trial ends, you get a 20% discount on your subscription, but only if you use that link. Anyhow, even though I failed English, that was mostly the result of laziness and burnout. My real nemesis in high school was math. No matter how hard I worked, I could not get it. Now, even though I did not technically pass high school, I was the recipient of some good old affirmative action and ended up in college anyway, where I was also a terrible student. And to make matters worse, I was big into drinking and chasing girls. Ultimately, I fell out after three semesters. For the next part of the story to make sense, you gotta know that my friends in high school were nerds. It's a cool story for another video, but I went to a high school far on the other side of town in a completely different socioeconomic level. I was the beneficiary of positive peer pressure. I wanted to be like my friends, but I just didn't have the intellectual firepower. I did a great job of hiding it though. Why was I so bad at math though? There are a few reasons, but the biggest one is that I never had a foundation. I did elementary and middle school at schools in the heart of the hood, and it was as bad as you can imagine. We had metal detectors in middle school along with a uniform policy to keep the gang colors out. 
And then elementary school, we were doing active shooter drills before the rest of the nation got hip to them and they became cool. Let that sink in for a minute. A bunch of 9 and 10 year olds were being drilled on what to do if the gangbangers got out of pocket and some of the violence ended up at a damn elementary school. Or they were shooting at the school bus. It's damn hard for a kid to learn in that type of environment. And that says nothing for the bullying I experienced while I was there. I've linked to the video in the description and the card that should appear on the screen that teaches you what I learned about dealing with bullies from that environment. I've also linked to an ever-growing playlist of my videos about my experiences in the hood in the description. So when I got to high school, I had no academic foundation and fell so far behind that I failed high school. This, of course, did a number on my self-esteem when it came to my intellectual ability. I didn't do anything for the four years after I graduated high school besides make a bunch of failed attempts at community college and drink myself into a stupor. But then I took up boxing at the age of 22. And let me tell you something, I was terrible at that too. I was only beating guys on raw power and athleticism, but I wasn't learning the sweet science of learning how to hit and not get hit. My footwork was trash, my punches were all warm, and my technique was terrible. And my cardio wasn't terrible, but it was subpar for boxing. Once in an amateur fight, I punched with such bad technique and balance that I knocked myself down. I was only able to beat guys if they had worse footwork than me, but anyone who moved out of the way when I popped out a jab would beat me on points alone. For my first 15 or so fights, I only had two losses. All of my wins were by knockout, but my losses were on points. That might sound impressive, but it's not good. It meant that I couldn't box. I could only brawl. But I told myself the only way I quit is if I got injured because at that point, I was a bit a bit terrified of just becoming a high school has-been whose only claim to fame was that I could get girls. <clears throat> I was just tired of being a loser, so I figured that if I can't educate myself to greatness, I'd fight myself there instead. This decision to not quit was one of the most significant I've ever made, only behind getting sober and committing to my wife. Over time... I became good enough to win the PA State Golden Gloves title and finish in the quarterfinals of the National Golden Glove Tournament. I finished in the semifinals for the East-West Trials, old amateur fighters don't know what that is, and win the Police Athletic League National Tournament and go on to have a 13-1-1 professional boxing career where I was signed by Rock Nation Sports. All of this happened because I learned how to box. I went from being a clumsy beginner to a graceful master, and when I got back to school, I decided to go back to school in my 30s. I eventually earned a bachelor's degree in physics despite failing at math in high school because of all of this. What did I do and how can you implement these tactics that I took from boxing to help you learn faster? Well, first, let's start with the mindset. I know it's cliche, but it's, it, this is more than if you just believe it, you can do it, and if you set your mind to it. When it comes to learning and skill acquisition, there are, broadly speaking, two types of mindsets, fixed and growth. These were popularized by Stanford psychologist Claire Carol Dweck in her aptly titled book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, and they're exactly what they sound like. A fixed mindset is when you believe that your abilities and skills are fixed. Whatever you start with is all you have, and you can only experience marginal improvements via practice. A growth mindset perspective is an approach in which you think you can get good at anything and acquire any skill. Objectively speaking, it doesn't matter which one is more correct or has more evidence to support it. All that matters is that whichever one you believe will determine how much effort you put in. The most powerful belief you can hold is that given enough time and motivation, you can learn anything. After I watched myself go from a clumsy brawler to a somewhat skilled national champion caliber boxer, I figured that if I had done this with my body, there was no reason I couldn't accomplish the same with my mind. So now I had the confidence to approach math because I no longer believed I wasn't a math person. Instead, I started to see myself as a person who could, if I worked hard enough, master math. But that meant figuring out why I was so bad at math in the first place. See, math is cumulative which meant that my later difficulties started at some point earlier in my education. Very often when people have difficulty performing an expected skill at the same level as their peers, the problem isn't mindset or ability, but rather they were never taught the fundamental building blocks of their skill set. Because they lack this fundamental knowledge, their progress is limited because you can only go as far as your biggest weakness. 
It didn't matter how hard I hit guys because I never learned the fundamentals of boxing footwork. All my opponents had to do was move out of the way or viciously counterattack me. It wasn't until I learned how to move my feet the right way that I was able to finally beat a kid who had bested me twice and win the Pennsylvania State Golden Gloves in our third fight by knocking him out. When I attempted school again, I drew on this experience and did a deep dive into my math knowledge to see where my fundamentals were lacking. What I realized is that I never learned even grade school arithmetic correctly, so I laid out a plan. When you build a fundamental knowledge base of a skill you're trying to learn, it can feel like you're taking the long way, but I assure you this is the fastest way to learn anything. When you do things the right way from the beginning, you save time twice. Because first, you won't have to make any mistakes in the future that you'll have to go back and redo. And second, well, you don't ever have to slow down. You'll always be moving as fast as you can and you won't have to slow down because you won't have to redo anything. And when you hit plateaus, those plateaus will be shorter. So for many months, I did basic math problems and watched every tutorial I could find until I felt confident that my math skills were on point. And eventually I got a test because I enlisted in the army at age 28 to get money for school. I had to take the ASVAB. And that is the test that is like the SAT for the military if you don't know. The Armed Services Vocational and Aptitude Battery Test. And I scored a 99. Every soldier has to take this and 99 is like the highest you can get. And it gave me the option to do any military occupational specialty I wanted to. Now, once I fixed my issues with math, I breezed through it. I breezed through calculus, differential equations, and linear algebra. I also became quite the popular tutor for high schoolers taking physics and mathematics. If you had told 18 year old me who had just failed high school due largely in part to his performance in mathematics that I'd be helping kids pass the AP physics and calculus exams, I would have laughed at you. But alas, I stumbled into a $2,000 per week side hustle that was even more rewarding than it was profitable. The final thing that will speed up your learning is doing more learning. In a study by Robert A. Bjork and Elizabeth uh, Ligorn Bjork in 1992, two groups of participants were assigned to learn a list of words. One group stopped practicing after reaching a specific level of accuracy, while the other group continued to overlearn the words. The results revealed that the overlearning group exhibited superior long-term retention and recall compared to the group that stopped at the criteria required where they felt like they memorized. Even after a considerable delay in recall times and practice, the overlearning group displayed enhanced performance. This type of learning and training is a monotonous ground, but I'm convinced that the only way to become more proficient in anything is to practice beyond the point of boredom. Consistency and repetition only get you an invite to the audition. If you want the leading role, you need to know your craft so well that you don't think about it but could never forget it. And overlearning it is how you do it. If we take everything in this video together, we can say that the best way to learn faster boils down to three core ideas. Well begun is halfway done. Or if you prefer, measure once or measure twice, cut once. Two, shortcuts are the longest way to do anything worthwhile. The only real shortcut is the long, hard way. And three, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you never get it wrong and then practice some more. While there's a good chance I'm the only boxer you know with a physics degree, I'm not the first fighter to credit unarmed combat with making him smarter. Watch this video here to see my breakdown of the advice Miyamoto Musashi gives about polymathic learning in the Book of Five Rings.